Hey, Kevin, making a whistle? No, I'm, I'm making something that spins, actually. I've been getting a lot of questions here lately about how do I make something spin? You need a bearing or two. So bearings are really simple. There's really only three different pieces to a, a bearing assembly. You've got an upper and lower race that the bearing actually runs in. You've got the cage that holds the balls of the ball bearings. This is what the other side looks like with the balls just trapped inside. These two edges are just crimped together just a little bit just to hold them down inside there. And then the hole in the cage keeps them all aligned, keeps them all separated just the way they're supposed to be. When you put it together, the cage fits into one race. The other race just sits on top of it. And now you have a bearing. Now there are many different styles of bearings. You know, this is a thrust bearing. You've got like the wheel bearings in your car, you know, that hold the wheels on. You know, they're shaped just a little different. Do the same thing but they're just built for a different function. They're built for a different application. I like to use the thrust bearings in what I use. They seem to work the best for, for how I work. What do I do with them? This is a little assembly I just made, and it has one thrust bearing up here in the top, and this will get welded on. These two pieces will be welded together when I install it, and you can see there's a little hole right here. So I'm going to get a Zerk fitting for a grease gun and I'm going to put a little Zerk fitting right there because once I weld these two pieces together, well the bearing is now captured, you won't be able to get to it. But with a, a Zerk fitting there for a grease gun, now every now and again, once twice a year, give it a little squirt of grease, keep it spinning, keep it happy. So that's the top of the assembly. So this angle will actually be welded onto the sculpture itself. This all gets installed in the base. This is the top piece. Here is one thrust bearing. And down here is another thrust bearing. And all I did was take a shaft, an you know, aluminum shaft that was too big, turn this down on the lathe. So this thrust bearing actually has a shoulder it can sit on. So it's captive, you know, it, it's captive here in the bottom, but yet it still spins on the top. I turned the inside of this piece of pipe so it fits the outside diameter of that thrust bearing and did the same at the top. Turn the shaft down even farther so this smaller thrust bearing can fit in here. And then I turned a recess inside this top piece. So it's a nice snug fit right over the top. Everything gets all lined up, all welded together, welded to the sculpture, and now everything can spin nice and smooth, nice and easy. And the really nice thing with this setup is you don't have to weld the bearings on. You don't have to weld the races on. You know, you can't. These are steel races to an aluminum shaft, so you can't weld those together. So that's why I set it up this way. You know, I suppose I could even, you know, if you want to get real sneaky, you want to get real trick about it, Instead of welding these two pieces together, I could have hollowed this out inside just a little bit more, cut the outside diameter down a little, and threaded them so that they would screw together. That way you could take it all apart, you could unscrew this and be able to get to that top bearing again. And I'm sure I, I can hear, I can hear some of you out there typing right now. Well, wait a minute, Kevin. Why do you have two bearings in there? You don't need two bearings. One bearing would be perfectly acceptable. No, it won't. Because if you've got just one bearing down there, now you've got slop in this shaft, this outer shaft that's actually attached to the sculpture itself. Either this inner shaft has to be the same size inside diameter as the pipe, but then you can't get the bearing on it to get rid of that wobble, or you put another bearing in the top of it. Smaller diameter, fits inside everything, and now there's no movement, there's no slot, if I can hold the bottom steady, there's no movement in there, there's no slot side to side. So I hope that helps you guys get your bearings and figure out how to make whatever it is you're working on spin. I do appreciate you all watching. Come out to the website, see what's going on out there, and I'll see you all next time. The original fidget spinner.